Hi, I'm Stefan Farou, and this is the fifth installment in my video overview of my book Getting the Message Across, how to use presentation software such as PowerPoint to give interesting technical presentations. Chapter 5 is simply called Transitions, and I believe that people simply don't pay enough attention to how they switch from one slide to the next. I had a traumatic experience at a conference many years ago when what should have been a good presentation was completely spoiled by random transitions from one slide to the next. The presentation looked a bit like this. And even the presenter seemed to be surprised and distracted by the transitions. For many years following this, I used no transition at all, simply replacing the slide with the next, until one day I wanted to explain how messages are sent across networks as small packets. When you need to send something big, it's sliced and diced at one hand and packets, which may arrive in the wrong order, are reassembled at the other end. To represent the network, a cylinder shape, which I flipped over and filled with a gradient to make it look more like a pipe. Something big? That's not fair cliché. I found a fun elephant clip out. My goal was to have the elephant at one end, to make it disappear with animations that I'll talk about soon, and at the same time to make the same clip art appear at the other end to convey the idea of dismantling, then reassembly. And there I was stuck. Fade? It doesn't work. The message doesn't turn to steam. Dissolve? Not any better. It looks like pixie dust. Checkerboard was a better effect, but I want something that looks random because packets may arrive out of order. I don't remember why I had the idea of turning the single slide into two separate slides, one showing the original state and one showing the final state. But that's what I did, and I tried the dissolve transition between the two slides. It gave me exactly what I was looking for. What surprised me at first is that the transition didn't affect the pipe at all, and I understood that other transitions than no transition at all or fade only affect what changes in slides and are completely invisible with two successive identical slides. If you remember what I said in chapter 2 about continuity and breaks, that means that some transitions favor continuity, while some other transitions introduce a break even with identical slides, and this is very important for the flow of your presentation. It really helps you think not in terms of slides, but in terms of fluid sequences in which you develop a single ID on several slides. By contrast, very visible transitions can be used to indicate breaks. A very interesting family of transitions are the push transitions, which I'm going to illustrate with a Swedish flag. As you may know, Sweden is a country that extends far, far to the north, almost to the North Pole, where Santa Claus is said to live. Now, if you return to the south of the country and drive to the west, you encounter Norwegians, who are the proud descendants of Vikings. What you think you have seen is this, a window moving over a kind of canvas that is far bigger than the screen. What you have really seen is a small collection of independent slides, which I've switched First, by pushing from top to suggest moving up, from bottom to suggest moving down, and then from left to suggest moving left, and nothing more. I explain in the book how to use this technique to explore a complicated process diagram. 